round four of the Focus on Furniture and Bedding Victorian Rally Championship, the Mary Barra Toyota George Derrick Pyrenees Rush was well received by competitors, many who were also competing in what was the first round of the Bendigo Tire Centre Victorian Motored Rally Series. The mix of Shire, Plantation and Forestry Road certainly kept all the crews on their toes and provided some great action for the many spectators who came to the region to watch the event unfold. But for a few crews, the rush was simply too much, as Alan Baker found out. Alan Rowe, you were going so well. You were second after uh, heat one. Uh, DNF today, what's happened? Um, what's happened? Well, we've done a bit of damage to the car. It got a tree going a bit hard. Um, yeah, a bit to learn still, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, got a tree. You're going so well up to then. Uh, how do you credit that? Um, really good car nice car new car that i've built i spent last year driving a front wheel drive in arc a ford focus and then um, driven a nissan 200 sx in uh, vrc a few years ago rear wheel drive so i guess there's a bit of a combination of both being all wheel drive and certainly fantastic can't wait to do more of it it's absolutely a smile on my face you uh, can't do this sort of sp uh, sport without a bit of support and help who's helping you um, look, really, it's um, my own business. Uh, a, a friend, Andrew Vibert, does a lot of the work on it for me, and he's had years of experience with uh, rallying, so it's great to have him involved. Um, yeah, also Daco Belts, they, they help me a bit as well, so no, it's good. Also, sorry, also, I'd just like to say uh, a thanks to Brent McKenzie, he's, he did a fantastic job. We've never been in, in a car together before, so that, was, uh, that worked perfect. So you're not blaming the navigator then for have a bum call on the notes? Oh, absolutely not. No, it was probably a bit much of the right foot and uh, just inexperienced, yeah. The car accelerates so quickly and you, you come up to things, you know, pretty rapidly. So, yeah, just got it wrong. Well, at the risk of sounding cliche, I, I think most of that will buff out. <laughs> I wish it would. <laughs> In the end though, Darren Windus and Jamie Sargent continued their domination of the 2015 championship, winning five of the ten stages, with Justin Dow and Simon Ellis coming home in second in what was the first competitive outing for Justin in the Volkswagen Polo S2000. Brian Sammons and Dan Parry in the Nissan 200SX took home the two-wheel drive honours with just over a minute between second place two-wheel drive competitors Grant Walker and Corinne Seabrook. In the Our Auto Rally Series, Andrew Murdoch and Jamie Allen opened up their lead and beat former Australian Junior Championship winner Glenn Raymond in his guest drive by mere 18 seconds. Attention now draws across to the MRF Tyres Academus Rally on October 18. James caught up with ARC and Academus regular Mark Petter. G'day Mark, coming back to the VRC? Yeah, coming back for the Academus, so no, really looking forward to it. And you're not just bringing out any old car, you're bringing out the, uh, the Peugeot Maxi. Yeah, bringing out the new Maxi car, as you know, hopefully most people have seen, we've had a, you know, a, a difficult run being a brand new car, like we really haven't had a good event just yet, like we've only four yeah, right in on. Queensland, but that was, was only through attrition, not our speed, and we had a yeah. shocking run yep. at Rally Australia with some electrical yeah. gremlins that you know, we've been chasing for not the whole year, we've so got we're doing a little got, test got. this week. Uh, we're doing a little test again next week, and I'm really using the Academus as, uh, as a platform to, to send us into South Australia with a really good car. So, you know, I ran the Academus last year. It's a fantastic event on fantastic roads. So as a, as a rally, it's great fun. As a shakedown, it's going to be really beneficial for us. So, yeah, it's, it's you know, hopefully should be a really good fun event. Last year, you came out in Justin Dow's Volkswagen Polo S2000 and had a blast in that. And now you've had some time in the Maxi. How do you find driving between the two cars? As I sit here at the moment, that S2000, I reckon, is almost the best fun car I've ever driven. Um, but that said, I think once we get the Maxi right, it really is a sensational thing. Like, it showed glimpses on Sunday 
at Rally Australia, like we were still having to stop every stage and reset it, but we got it running half all right. And it is just like driving an R5 car with a little bit more grunt. So, yeah, it, it has the potential to be a really, really good thing. Darren Windus has been setting some very quick times this year in the VRC, clearly setting the outright pace. Do you think you can knock him off his perch? Yeah, look, Darren's been sensational. Um, even, you know, in the in the last round of the VRC, um, his times were great, you know, in comparison to Justin. So I think that'll be a really good benchmark where we're at with the car. Like, he's obviously, you know, a great driver. He's, you know, one of the quickest blokes around. So, you know, we probably won't be pushing 100% because we've got Adelaide, you know, a couple of days later. But, you know, if I can pick my stages and, and sort of drive reasonably safely and be on Darren's pace, I'll be really happy. Well, that's just certainly a, a good benchmark to aim for. Best of, best of luck with that one. Now, the Peter's name has been synonymous with rallying for many years, both at the high-level ARC, but also with some great support of club and competitors in recent years. What sort of advice would you be giving these up-and-coming competitors? Look, rally's been in our DNA forever. I remember, you know, being as a, a six-month-old, not remember, but, you know, as a six-month-old following Dad when he was running the Victorian Rally Championship. So, you know, rallying's been in our blood forever. And I think the you know, the state level championships at the moment are going, you know, quite well. Like we all know the ARC are struggling for numbers and and they'll change, you know, that, that will get better. Um, there'll be some real changes next year, which will hopefully open up the classes and that sort of thing, which, you know, will hopefully promote the ARC. But I think as far as state goes, especially Victoria, there's some seriously good events, some great run events. And, you know, some of them would, you know, challenge some of the ARCs being run at the moment. So, you know, for people that are, you know, the way we did it, we started off with club rallying, crashed a lot of cars, went to the state level rallying, crashed a few more cars, and um, but got quicker on the way, and really, you know, then stepped up to the ARC, and you know, the ARC has got to be that pinnacle that everyone wants to get to. But you know, your state level rallying can be as much fun, if not maybe a little bit more, because of the less travel as an ARC. So you know, get on it. It's seriously good fun. Thanks for your time today, Mark, and best of luck on the weekend. Thanks, thanks, mate. Look forward to it. I'm here with 1984 Australian Rally Champion Dinter David Officer. David, you're running the Rally Safe system that all the VRCs run. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, Rally Safe is a tracking system that we use to, uh, so we can keep track of where all the cars are. If they have a problem on a stage, they'll transmit a hazard, so we know there's potentially an issue. And if they have a major problem, they can transmit an SOS to headquarters. We can stop the stage and send in the MIVs. Well, it's certainly essential in modern rallying. Have you had any cause to use it today? Uh, we haven't had any SOSs today, which is a good thing. We've several hazards, a lot of them down in the pine plantation on uh, stage three and eight, but uh, I think they're probably not used to driving in pines anymore. So can you tell us, you've got a computer screen up here, it seems to be showing all the cars on the stages. Can you point out a few things of interest? Absolutely. On the screen here, we, have, uh, we can click on a car, see exactly how fast it's going at any particular point on the stage. Um, and we have another screen where it shows us all the cars completing through the stage, how many people start at the stage, how many people stop, finish the stage, so we know whether we have to go and look for people. Wow, great. Thanks, Dinner. We'll let you get back to it. Not a problem. Pete Otson, thanks for joining us today. Tell us a little bit about your event, the MRF Tyres Academus Rally. Well, it's um, short, of the, uh, short and sharp. Uh, it be a, 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 great, a great run for people. Uh, they'll be able to be warming up for just about any rally they wanted um, or just having more fun in the Focus on Furniture Victorian Rally Championship. Now, the event is happening on Sunday the 18th of October up in Alexandra, a couple of hours northwest of Melbourne. What time does the event start? Start at 9.30, due at the, first, uh, at the service break at 11.30. An hour later they leave, uh, you know, so there's an hour for service refuel. Um, and then two more hours and they're back in Alexandra. So a fairly compact event given that timing schedule, what have the competitors got lined up stage-wise? Right, there's three stages um, repeated in each heat. Uh, the competitive distance is about 48 kilometres per heat, so 96 uh, all up. Um, so a little bit down, you know, last year was probably about 110 total. Um, but the, um, yeah, so the, they'll have a lot of fun, a lot of fun. It's exciting times for rallying, particularly in Victoria, with the increase of sponsors coming on board. 
and the Melbourne Uni Car Club's case, MRF tyres have got behind the, the Academus rally. What sort of flow-on effect and, and benefit do you think MRF tyres will have on the event and, and sponsorship in, in general? Um, it benefits the event because um, the ever-increasing costs of, uh, of things that go in, uh, th those costs can be uh, you know, partially offset by their sponsorship. Uh, we've been through them. We've been able to organise um, some great uh, printing of logos and stuff for the event. Um, and the the competitors, every finisher, is going to get a uh, a discount voucher if they were going along and buy some uh, some MRF tyres. That's a, a pretty fantastic deal for competitors. And given there's still one more round to go after this event, this is a, a great opportunity. It is a great opportunity because um, the uh, the tyres, the first supply, you know, the first set of t you know, container of tyres, is due to arrive um, later in October, um, which means people would be able to get uh, those sort of tyres for either the begonia, if that's what they're doing, or um, even the alpine. Now moving towards spectating opportunities, what's lined up this year so the general public can come check out the action? Right, the, uh, the second point people would recognise, it's the traditional one now of Academus where cars come down the hill through a, a large open area with viewing terraces and that's a great point. Uh, the other point we have used in the past, um, it was burnt out totally by the fires in 2009 and so it, it, real scorched earth, there was nothing, just bare ground. Um, but, we were, but the roads were, had been destroyed also so we weren't able to go through there with the rally. Um, Finally, there's some regrowth, so it'll be a bit of, an, a, bit of a jungle explore to getting to your viewing point with that one. So uh, if, you're bringing a, uh, if you're bringing a pusher uh, or a small child, probably it's not the place to go. Uh, but it'd be, it, it's a great viewing spot. Uh, it'll just be a little bit of hard work getting in there and accessing it. The, the MRF Tyres Academus Rally is an event that's often looked forward to by many. Are there any additional changes to, to this year's event? The... Um, now, the, the event is a traditional academic. People like the area up there. We like the roads. Um, the, uh, probably this year's event will be the fastest academic we've had a long, for a long time because the, the very tight section of Eildon Warby Road that we've often used, uh, we're not using this year. So it will be, um, it'll be go uh, from one end to the other. And once people get into the forest, there's uh, a total of, I think it's 1.2 kilometres of transport between the stages. Now, we spoke earlier with, with Mark Petter, an ARC regular. He's entered in the event and bringing his maxi car out. Are you excited to see these ARC competitors show up at uh, these events? It, we are, and um, it, it's good. Yes, the Peugeot, uh, the maxi car, will be running. Um, it won't be scoring BRC points, of course. Uh, but we'll be contesting the noted series and we'll be getting some, uh, some, some road time in the car for, for Mark himself. Uh, we look forward to that. We've, we've, had, we've had, in recent years, we've had one or two cars uh, that are, have not been in the VRC having a run because they recognise the, because with the pace notes and the nature of the roads, it's a good place to come out and have a blast. Well, Peter, thanks for your time today and best of luck with the event. Thank you. And uh, we're looking forward to the event this year and uh, having MRF tyres along for the ride as well.